Hello, 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 my friends. Welcome to How to Land a Job in 30 Days. I'm very happy to co-organize this with Iskander and Clear Career. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We got 42 million people in this Zoom call. <laughs> I am incredibly excited. And we got people from, from Toronto, from Burlington, from everywhere around the world, pretty much. And we're very happy that, that you guys are all here. I'm going to ask everyone for the benefit of the call and making sure that it doesn't get stuck, that we mute our mics and that we also uh, deactivate our stop, stop our videos. And then as, uh, as kind of co-host of this, co of this workshop, I'm going to be checking the chat at all times. And if you have any questions, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to interrupt the scanner so that he can, uh, he can respond them as we go. And at the same time, this is pretty much a conversation. This is pretty much uh, an interactive workshop. So make sure that at all times you're asking questions, you're, you have comments, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have my, my video on, and I'm gonna just be asking Iskander questions as I read them in the chat. So again, welcome. I'm just gonna give you a brief one minute uh, intro, and then we're gonna jump in with Iskander, who's hosting 99.9 .9 of this incredible workshop. So basically, oh my God, Ana Maria Whitby, Ontario. Okay, everyone, everyone right where they are. Rachel, Montreal, Venezuela, Canada, Mexico, Argentina. We got uh, Mississauga, Sherbrooke. Oh no, that's a scanner. That's a scanner. <laughs> Windsor, Ontario. Okay, this is great. I have a question. How are you doing? Paula Carreño, we are doing amazing. Incredibly amazing. Carl Christian, Carl Christian Tagum, that's a pretty cool name. Uh, North York, represent me too. Okay, so brief, brief intro and then Iskander is going to take over. So basically, I know Iskander from 17 years ago. We went to high school together in uh, school in Quebec, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. And then I went to U of T, the University of Toronto, and Iskander also went to the University of Toronto, so we kept in touch there. And then he lives in Toronto, and I live in Toronto. And we've been uh, great friends since, since high school, but even better friends recently. And then since I quit my job three years ago, Iskander has helped me with Malpensando, which some of you know, which is a school that helps people become funny, confident speakers. So it's basically a public speaking and comedy school. And Iskander helped me like through a bunch of coffees that we, that we had, <laughs> get, get to these people, to these corporates, how to find corporate jobs, corporate events for us. That is, I'm not even exaggerating. It, it is amounted to thousands of, of dollars in corporate workshops just because he taught me how to write emails, which he'll do uh, here as well. And just to really network with people in the not traditional way. So I'm incredibly, uh, grateful that that Iskander agreed to do this for free to especially help uh, the Hispanic community that, that Malpensando has but also anyone who wants to learn how to land a job in 30 days and like the flyer says skip like the, the online things that you have to do or like the system doesn't know who you are doesn't even care so I'm just incredibly excited that he's here and that is my speech I'm now going to pass it on to Iskander. And remember, write your questions in the chat because I'm going to interrupt him as we go so that this can be interactive and fun. Okay, round of applause. Everyone write, ah, round of applause, round of applause in the chat box. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the legend, the unbreakable, the unmistakable, the highly capable, the trilingual, Izzy Iskander Piala shared. Bravo! <laughs> Thank you so much, Stefan. It's such a pleasure being here. I'm so excited to be talking to all of these people. We got 150 registrants tonight. I'm sure we're going to get probably a, you know, a good number of those uh, working from events. Typically, the rule is about 50% of people show up. So that's still a huge number. And um, I'm really excited to be here and share some hacks and share some tricks on how I think that uh, I can help you get ahead in your job search and 
it's going to be a lot of avoiding, you know, some of the nonsense you hear, some of the, the over and over tips that you hear all the time that, you know, yeah, yeah, I know I have to fix my resume. Yeah, yeah, I know I have to do this. But this is going to be really strategic, step-by-step -step plan and tips that's going to help you, um, you know, have an action plan on how to make a lot of progress in your job search over the next week and over the next 30 days. So I'm going to start my uh, presentation here. So let me just share my screen. And is my screen sharing okay? Can everyone see that? Yeah, you're good. You're good. I can see it. Okay, cool. Clear, do we want to do we loud want to and clear, like clear career? Awesome. And is is my uh, my presentation on Spotlight right now? Yes. Okay, sweet. So how to land a job in 30 days. All right. So today we're going to be going over a lot of tips and uh, it's going to be a jam packed session. I'm really excited to bring this to everybody here. So a little bit about me. Um, I've been doing career coaching since about 2015. A lot of it was informal. I, I started a community called the Clear Career uh, Peer Mentorship Community, where essentially it was um, me sharing tips and advice on job searching, and more and more people ended up joining. And now there's about 900 people in that Facebook group, which is really cool. I'll, I'll send an invite to that if anyone else wants to join too. Um, Izzy, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna. In I'm going to interrupt you quickly. Someone's asking, and a lot of people may have this question, will we be having copies of the presentation or how yes. does it work? Yes. yes. The, the presentation is going to be uh, shared. Um, and there's also a YouTube live. This session is recorded. It's going to be, you know, you're going to have access to all of that stuff. Perfect. We'll send all you right. after this through Eventbrite. We'll send you uh, how, if you want to contact the scanner privately, if you want to get access to the PowerPoints and you can also see it recorded on YouTube live, if you want to share it with a friend. Okay. Sorry. Keep going Izzy. No problem. So, uh, yeah, so I started that community, uh, since then I've done lots of workshops at U of T at Ryerson at most recently, just at Humber college last week, um, at a coding boot camp called lighthouse labs where I used to work. And uh, recently also at the United Nations Association in Canada for young entrepreneurs, which was really cool. Um, I've spoken alongside the LinkedIn learning team a couple years ago and uh, I've been a guest on a couple of different podcasts. And um, so there's a lot of different things that I've done. And I think that uh, the tips that I'm going to share are going to be extremely useful for you. Okay, so what this workshop is not about. This isn't going to be tricks on updating your resume. This isn't going to be how to update your LinkedIn. This isn't going to be how to bypass applicant tracking systems. It's not about how to apply on job boards more effectively and all of that other, you know, kind of repetitive advice that we hear over and over and over again that we all know. But at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't seem to be getting you that far. What I'm going to be teaching you is hacks, ways to actually um, be strategic around your time, around your effort, because it takes a lot of time to do everything that we do while we're looking for jobs. We need to do, you know, update our resume, update our LinkedIn, apply for jobs, fix up, you know, get a professional photo, uh, build a professional website, you know, learn how to use applicant tracking systems, yada, yada, yada. It's so exhausting. There's so much to do. So I want to teach you a few quick and easy steps in order to really take your job search to the next level and see results much quicker and in a way that you'll be able to track your results. This is going to focus a lot on building relationships from scratch with real people. Um, the techniques that I'm going to be teaching here today are proven techniques that I've been using for four or five years now, and, uh, and I've worked extremely well for all the people that have used them. And the more they listen and the more they, they actually follow the advice to, you know, to the T, the more results that they get. And that's also very evident in the, the group co coaching classes that I have as well. Um, a lot of it is planting seeds on how to ask for help from people. And, uh, and yeah, like I said, saving time and working smarter. So 
which of these do you fall in? Which of these categories? You can type in the chat if you want. Have you been recently laid off? Um, you know, do you have temporary or part-time work? Are you underemployed? Are you a newcomer to Canada who, you know, struggles with having Canadian experience? I know that there's a lot of people from the Malpensando community who are in this category. Um, maybe you don't know what you want to do next with your career. Maybe, uh, you know, you're getting interviews, but you just can't land the job. It's extremely frustrating. You've got a job, but you don't care about it. It just pays the bills, but you kind of, you know, it's frustrating and you hate it. Um, or you have a job, but you don't feel like you're doing anything important or making a difference in the world. It's just, you know, you, you've got a desk job and you don't really care. Or maybe, like a lot of us, you feel just overwhelmed and paralyzed. So which are you? Let us know in the chat. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Um, I want to take you to a point where you don't feel like this anymore, where you don't feel like you're getting that email that says, we regret to inform you that, and it's just infuriating. You get dozens of those. It's, it's just super exhausting. And when can we, you know, stop getting those emails and start making more progress? Okay, so today we're going to talk about the problem. We're going to talk about the foundations of the method and why it works. Um, we're going to talk about the four specific steps that I'm going to outline in this presentation. Uh, and then I'm going to give you some optional but highly recommended homework, which is a little free mini course that I developed a couple weeks ago. And it, it's basically a summary of this entire workshop. Um, that's something you can go through and it takes about an hour to do. So we'll go through that. And then we'll take some questions. If you've got questions at any point in, in the meantime, feel free to ask. Um, totally okay at any point to uh to ask questions and and uh stefan will let me know and speak up and yeah I'm, see where. I'm monitoring these questions Ana maria says stefan said you changed his life and i want to learn that <laughs> <laughs> i feel the more i feel the more we share these types of webinars the more we empower our communities and i think that's Great. very true so thanks thanks for that comment i see a lot of unemployed newcomers a lot of newcomers laid off and not sure about my career, a few interviews, uh, ending university. Great. So this is a good crowd. Excellent. Okay, so here's the problem. Job boards are terrible. I want you to essentially completely stop using job boards because there's a number of reasons for this. Job boards are like a black hole. You send in applications, you have no power over knowing any information about it over knowing if people are reading your applications if they're even ever being read by a human uh it's draining it's time consuming all these different applications are totally different from one another there's all these different systems and you know you can't just very easily go and make one and kind of copy it to all the others so it's very frustrating it's very time consuming and they have an extremely low success rate about two to four percent on average effectiveness for um, for getting jobs. The second is competition. When you're applying on job boards, most jobs will have that are they're posted on these public boards have about 200 to 400 applicants by the time that they get to the the, the on the job board, and that's after they've already gone and posted internally. So a lot of the time you're dealing with hundreds of other people, and so it just really pulls down your success rate and it makes it very, very difficult to get past the post to make a difference there. Uh, there's a statistic by Top Resume that 75% of resumes are actually rejected by the applicant tracking system before a human ever even reads it. So that's just, you know, it just goes to show how much time we put into something that, that uh, you know, doesn't even go anywhere. Third, we don't get to talk directly to the decision maker, and we'll go directly into that a little bit further in the presentation, but a lot of the time, you know, we deal with the applicant tracking system, then the job screen, then the interviewer, then the decision maker. And what we're going to focus on here is going straight to the decision maker, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. And then the last is the hidden job market. So, um, 
there, you know, there are varying statistics on this, but about 70 to 80% of the job market is hidden. And what does that mean? That means that jobs are not always posted online. A lot of the time there are companies that have jobs that they post internally. A lot of the time there are jobs that, um, that you know, companies are thinking about hiring, but they haven't actually posted about it yet. Um, or, you know, they, they don't have the budget to go and advertise on job boards. And sometimes they don't even need, they, they don't even know they, you know, they, that they need you. And sometimes you just introducing yourself kind of creates a wedge. And there have been two opportunities in my personal career where a job has been created from scratch from, that, that didn't even exist. So I want to show you how to, you know, go through and do these kinds of hacks to excel in your career and um, really get ahead in your job search. And I just want to add something, Izzy, and for, I see yeah. a lot of people that I, that I know within the 60 million people that I have connected right now. <laughs> and and uh, what I like the most about a scanner and why I say he changed my life is because, uh, like my life is an exaggeration, but the, the thing is that Iskander tells you the way things are done the Canadian way and what works the Canadian way, which is, the best thing for us, because as immigrants, let's say something in Costa Rica, like it, uh, networking in Colombia, Mexico, or Costa Rica, or whatever, it's very different than here. Or doing business is very different than here. Interviewing or your resume is very different. So pay attention and take notes, even though for the people who just joined us, you'll get these slides after the presentation via Eventbrite. But take notes, especially when, when Iskander shares the, these things, because they work in this framework. And that's the thing that, that, that added so much more value to me because I was always guessing, will this work in Canada? Will they be offended? Am I, am I following up right now? Am I being too pushy or is this normal in Canada? So mm -hmm. take notes, but also ask questions because I'll voice them to Iskander immediately and then he'll, he'll be answering them as we go. Go totally. ahead, go ahead. And uh, so one thing to add to that is, you know, Stefan mentioned the Canadian way, but I want to kind of take it a step further because this isn't kind of the regular Canadian way either. This is like a very modern technique that um, most people actually don't use, uh, even in Canada. And I want you to, to kind of take advantage of kind of these secret tips of how to build a network and how to have the confidence to, to reach out to people directly. Um, and it's going to feel really scary. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to feel very stressful and scary at the beginning, but once you do it once or twice, I promise you it will start to make a big, big difference and really boost your confidence going forward. And it has with all of the students that I've had in my coaching courses. And, uh, and I would love you to, to experience that as well, because when you feel that confidence, it motivates you to do more. All right. So um, a few stats for you. So I already talked about how 75% of uh, resumes are rejected before they ever even reach a human. Um, networking wins. About 60 to 85% of jobs are obtained through networking, not online. That's an insane statistic. So it really goes to show how much, you know, you, there's that age old saying, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. And that's not always because of nepotism. It's not always because of unfair advantages. It's really just building connections and, you know, sticking your foot in the door and creating an opportunity for yourself where an opportunity may not have existed before. Um, then number three, it really does come down to a numbers game because the, the techniques that I'm going to show you today increase your odds. Um, but at the end of the day, if you only send out one or two emails, you're still not going to be very successful. So I really want you to get to a point where, okay, you know, sometimes people will send out 100 job applications on job boards and they'll get like two or three responses back. Well, I want to change that so you're getting more like one in four, about 25% success rate in people responding to you and agreeing to meet with you and that kind of thing. But if you only send out four emails, you're only going to get one opportunity. So at the end of the day, I want you to think of this as a numbers game and really send out as many requests as you can so you get more and more opportunities. And the last is that uh, on average in the United States, we're in Canada, but I'm assuming um, similar statistics there, the average job search takes about five months, which is a long time. So I want you to prepare 
to be to be consistently motivated to uh, find opportunities to you know meet with other job seekers, including people in this community or you know in the clear career community if you want to join our groups or whatever, um, where you're consistently meeting with another group of people of other job seekers and sharing your wins, sharing your highs and your lows, and when you're when you're struggling, and it's really important that you do that. And the other the other advantage there is that when you're in a community, when you're in a group of people that are going through this together openly, then whenever someone else sees success, it will immediately drag the rest of you up. It will motivate the rest of you to say, hey, you know what, Carmen got a job, or Car you know, Stefania got uh, an interview, and, you know, let's try a little bit harder and, let, you know, we all get excited together. So that is something that I've seen in my groups and it's something that I've seen in, um, you know, in all the groups that I've been part of. So I want you to experience that as well. Is he, Andy Mendoza is asking, are the stats here before COVID or, or have they changed a little bit with COVID or are these after COVID? These are pre-COVID stats. Um, I, don't, I don't think there's enough research yet. Um, maybe there's stats that are just coming out, but these are definitely pre-COVID stats. Okay. But I will say that, um, you know, a lot of people have been concerned that there are no jobs and things like that. That is definitely not true. The job market is definitely recovering. And I've seen a lot of people, um, and you might have as well, getting hired right now and being part of these new cohorts of people that have never met their 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 you know coworkers because they're all working remotely and things like that. So um, there are definitely people hiring right now, and companies have adapted, and there are lots of opportunities. We just have to find where they are, and you know dig a hole in and create our own opportunities. Okay, so the clear career method, the method that I have developed focuses on motivation. So creating opportunities to motivate yourself, um, like what we were talking about a little bit, um, so support and accountability. Um, it focuses a lot on designing your career from scratch, being intentional about what we want. And um, I'm not going to go through that too much today, but um, I'm going to give you some specific steps regarding the networking and applications. And then um, one thing that I go over in my courses and things you'll find online that I won't touch on too much today is, is following up with people and how to follow up with people. Okay, so getting started. So there are four steps that we're going to go through today that, um, that I want you to, you know, take notes on and you'll be able to see these slides. And the mini course at the end that I've got is going to walk you through these specific things. Um, this is going to be very specific, so make sure to pay close attention and ask questions if you have them. But we're going to go through research and how to actually go about researching what we want, researching companies we might want to work at. Um, number two is prospecting. And prospecting, for those of you who don't know the word, means um, going in and basically finding people, finding opportunities. So finding specific contacts in decision-making roles at the companies that we found in number one. Then number three is gonna be about emailing these people directly. So we're gonna find these people, we're gonna find their direct email addresses, and then we're actually gonna email them directly. And there are two ways of doing that. The first is emails where we ask for help, essentially the ones where um, we say, hey, my name is Izzy, you know, I just graduated from university, I'm really interested in um, breaking into a marketing role. I see that you've had about six years of experience in a few different companies, and I'd love to find out how to get to where you are today. So, you know, would you be willing to hop on a short 20-minute phone call with me? I'd love to, to, you know, get some of your advice and see what we can do um, so, so I can be successful in my career. And the second is direct application emails, where we email people specifically with the intention of applying for a role that may or may not even exist. So, um, you know, a lot of what I teach my students is applying for jobs that you want that aren't even posted. And that is really powerful because that means that there's almost no competition. 
And so when you say, hey, you know, I want a job as a social media manager and the companies that you're emailing don't have one or didn't even post a job, then, you know, you may or may not succeed, but it also means that there's no competition. So that gives you a big advantage for the ones that have maybe been considering it, but haven't voiced that yet. And then the last, and this is going to be really fun, is how to track your email to see what is being read and what isn't being read. So this is going to be really fun, and I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to do this. Um, Stefan, is there anything that's in the chat before we move on? Yes, Anna has Anna has a question about translating the, the presentation to Spanish so you can reach more people. I think I'm going to connect you with her after the presentation to, to discuss that. And then okay. Jorge, Jorge Garbosa says, how is a traditional ask for help and direct apply email? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll go through that in a minute. So you'll see uh, awesome. down the line. I have a specific template and also in the mini course, I have another template that you can join as well. And again, this is a free thing that you can access right after. We'll email you the link that's, to it. That's important. It's a free mini course. So yeah. stay until so, the end of it. You're going to get so much more, so much value. Yeah. And keep the questions coming. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So step one, research. How do we find out what we want to do? How do we find out what opportunities are out there? Well, some of it is searching online, right? The basic going on Google, searching for the types of roles and companies that you might be interested in. Doing this will do one thing that's really important. And sometimes you'll find, oppor um, not opportunities, you'll find roles that you didn't know existed. So when you kind of start to plan out and find a list of keywords that you're interested in, like marketing or like, you know, blogging or, um, you know, management or whatever it is that you're interested in. When you start looking up roles like that, you'll start to see a trend in specific titles that come up, like marketing manager or digital media coordinator or, you know, um, you know, translator or whatever it is. When you find those roles, you can start looking at the descriptions and figuring out if those are the types of things you might be interested in and then looking for more opportunities like that. The second is talk to everyone. This is so key and so few people do it. Everyone you know is a potential connection. Your parents, your friends, your uncle, your old boss, your neighbor, the person you run into when you're walking your dog, literally everybody. So your ex-boyfriend, your ex-girlfriend, totally your ex-wife, your ex-husband. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, think about, think about it this way. Any opportunity that you have to convey to someone what you're looking for is an opportunity for them to help you. So if you have a concise ask, a specific ask that you have to develop, you have to spend a little bit of time, you know, writing some of the things that you want and say, hey, you know what, I'm looking for a job where um, I can learn about, uh, you know, the, the Bitcoin or something like that. And I don't really know what kind of jobs are out there. Um, and I want to find and meet people who do that. And I want to see what kinds of opportunities are out there. The more you talk about that, the more people will start to say, oh, hey, you know what? I know this company that does that. Or, hey, my friend is really good at Bitcoin. You know, he might give you some, some, uh, some you know, tips on the types of people to talk to. And when you start with one person, that person connects you with other people. And that's where the beauty of networking comes into play. So, Izzy, we have, a, we have a question that is relevant to talking to everyone from sure. Gabriela Ureña. She says, sure. about finding specific contacts in decision-making roles, what are the suggestions? What I've done so far via LinkedIn only is I search for recruiters and talent acquisition roles. I have sent some short messages just to connect but it seems they don't even care about reading or accepting an invitation. Any suggestions on how to leverage these prospects uh, search experience? Thanks. And what was, what was this person's name? Gabriela Ureña. Gabriela, I have some great tips for you today and you're going to get them very shortly. So you'll, you'll get, we're going to get right into all Gabriela that. Ureña, I don't know where you're from, but you better buckle up. Sit on the ground because you're going to fall from your chair pretty soon. All right. <laughs> okay. But um, anyway, to go back to networking, 
stop thinking of networking as, you know, a, a, a lot of people have a bad association with the word networking. They think of stuffy people with business suits exchanging business cards, and that's not what it is. Networking is about building relationships, finding ways of connecting people where you're interested in one another and seeing if there's ways you can help each other. So networking is a good thing. Think of more, think of it more as relationship building than this kind of slightly sleazy networking term. And the last is job boards. Okay, so job boards, I do not want you to apply on job boards, but I will say this, they're a good way to get inspiration. So in the same way that your high school history teacher may have told you to never use Wikipedia and like reference Wikipedia on your essays and things like that, same thing with job boards. I don't want you to actually apply on job boards, but use them for inspiration, use them for ideas and maybe researching types of companies you're interested in, okay? So that's step one, research. Step two is prospecting. And this is gonna be really fun, okay? So um, on LinkedIn, we're gonna go through a couple of things here, but I want you to go on LinkedIn and well, even before that, make a list of companies that you're interested in working for. And then one at a time, go on LinkedIn and type that company's name into LinkedIn and it'll bring you to a page like this, the company page. If it's, if it's you know, a company that's relatively you know, been around for a little while, if it's super new and it's a tiny startup, they might not have a LinkedIn, but most of the time they do. And then I want you to click on this box here that says see all however many employees on LinkedIn. Okay, so the next step is to apply filters. So the filters that we apply are gonna be able to narrow down the types of people we're looking for and where they are and things like that. So if I look up Microsoft on LinkedIn right now, there's, you know, you saw like 19,000 connections on there. That's, or maybe even more, I think it was like 100,000 or something like that. What did you see here? Yeah, 191,000 uh, connections. That's way too much. We wanna bring that down and filter that down as much as possible. So we can go and do that by filtering to the city that we live in, so Toronto or Montreal or wherever you're from. And then filtering by role, so you can maybe look for specific roles, and this is where we're gonna find specific decision makers. And uh, Gabriela, you were mentioning how um, you know, you're talking to talent people and recruiters and things like that, but at the end of the day, those aren't the top decision makers. The top decision makers are, think of it as who is gonna be your boss when you actually take this role. So we don't wanna look for the, the director of talent acquisition, we wanna look for the manager of the marketing department who is, you know, who we wanna find. Or, you know, whatever it is that the job is you're looking for, the manager of the, the role. And it can be hard to figure out who that is, but take your best guess and go with that. And you can find maybe two or three that might work for you and write them down. And then we're going to use those and try to contact at least one or two of those. Okay, so when you filter, see here how I'm picking Toronto, I'm picking current companies, Microsoft, you know, up here in the search, I might actually write um, marketing manager or like sales director or um, whatever it is. So the key here is about how big the company is and um, you know, how high up the chain we wanna go. If you're looking at a very small company that's maybe 10 people or 20 people, then you might wanna go and directly reach out to the CEO because it's a small company. So at the top of the chain, the decision maker is the CEO and there aren't so many people that they're gonna have HR and they're gonna have all these other things. Um, so directly reaching out to the CEO could be really good when you're going for smaller companies. And I think we, I think, sorry to interrupt, Dizzy, I think we sometimes sure. think that a, a hundred thousand people are messaging these people, but not necessarily. And, and totally. your message can get directly to them. I have a, I have a quick question from Felicia that you might be answered, uh, may, might be able to answer right now or later. Are there some yeah. specific questions I can ask myself to get to know what I'm interested in and know what career path I want to follow? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And I'm not going to cover that too much in this, but I have some great articles um, on my LinkedIn that you can find. Or you can also just tweet at me at Izzy Does Izzy, or you can email me after. 
and we can go into all of that kind of stuff. But a lot of um, things, just to kind of briefly touch into it, um, try to think of the last three or four jobs that you had. And if you haven't had jobs, maybe volunteer opportunities, or if you're a student, you know, what kind of things you were involved in. And think about finding, um, you know, what the specific roles that you had in those, in those positions were. And then pull out and find what your favorite things that you did in those different roles was. And that's a good way of finding some of the things that you might want to be interested in looking for. Um, and there's a ton more that we can, I can have a whole separate presentation on this, but definitely reach out and um, we can go into more of that or, you know, we can even have a whole separate presentation if you don't, next week or something. If you don't know where to contact Izzy on his name tag right here, it's, it's, it's Skander Piala shirt. And then it's his Twitter. Also, Iskander PL is his name on LinkedIn and on Instagram as well. Uh, Izzy does Izzy on Instagram. Yeah. Okay, okay. go ahead. So um, anyway, back to uh, filtering down on LinkedIn. So see here how out of all these people at Microsoft, I went and found a marketing manager because I was looking for a marketing role. So this is the person that I want to reach out to because they're probably going to be the boss of the department. But Microsoft is huge. Is this the right marketing manager? Because there's probably 10,000 of them. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is that I looked for someone in Toronto and they're a marketing manager in Toronto for a job that I might be interested in. So emailing them is going to be, is going to get you better results than emailing, uh, you know, applying generally on, um, you know, on a job board or on the Microsoft website or whatever. And also, a lot of the time, that person will forward your email to the right person. So even if you got the wrong person, your success rate will be much higher by just finding a specific person, even if it's not the exact right person. So that's a big, big part here. Okay. So next, finding their email address. So there's a website called hunter.io. You can write that down. Um, and it's also going to be in that little mini course at the end of the thing. It's going to walk you through all of this. These screenshots are all actually from that little mini course. So I highly recommend you go and find this because when you Hunter what? Sorry, in, is he? Hunter what? Hunter, H-U-N-T-E-R yeah. dot I-O. Okay, I'm, I'm writing it here in the chat, hunter.io, right? Yeah, cool. Exactly. Cool. Okay, so um, uh, if you sign up for that, it's free. Uh, and what you do is in this domain search here, you can type the name of the company. And then when you hit enter, it's going to spit out a bunch of people's actual direct emails that work there. Second, you can actually search by a specific person. And it won't always give you the right specific email, but it'll give you the best guess based on number three here, you see the, the most common pattern for the email. So we can see that for Microsoft people, it's last name and first initial at microsoft.com. And we went and looked up this person here, who's the, I think it's the CEO. And, um, and then you can see here that the email is Satya N. Okay, so in this case, it was the opposite, where it was uh, the, the first name and last initial. In this case, it says last name, first initial, but what you'll notice is if there's a little green crest with a check mark, that means that it's a confirmed email. That means that this is definitely this person's email. If it is, however, just a green dot, it means it's hunter.io's best guess at what this person's email address is, okay? There are a ton more tips on fishing out someone's direct email address in the mini course, and I highly recommend you do it. It will only take you an hour to do and really get you really far in doing that kind of stuff. That's a money okay. tip. I'm, I'm thinking about emailing Mark Zuckerberg for after this. Totally. Um, so next step what do we actually email to these people? The structure that I like to have is one, start with a connection. Start with something that you found about them that you admire. 
um, go and Google them, find their LinkedIn, find something that you think is really genuinely interesting to you about this person. And I'll give you an example of that in a minute. Second is quantify your accomplishments. And this is something that you'll, you know, that you'll hear in your resume tips. This is one of the most important things that you can do while you're looking for jobs is go back and quantify your accomplishments. So what does that mean? Okay. Yesterday I was talking with one of my friends who is a flight attendant and she's been working at Air Canada for a number of years. And she told me that, um, you know, she had some experience and she was applying for all kinds of stuff. And I said, okay, well, how are you quantifying your accomplishments? And she's like, well, I don't really know, you know, how, how can I do that? And well, there's one really easy way. One, how many years have you been working in the airline industry? Okay, she said eight years. Okay, eight years, wow, right there, immediate way to quantify something. Okay, so after that, in those eight years, how many flights do you think that you've actually been on and, and worked on? And she was like, oh, I don't know, there's so many. And so we can work backwards and may, maybe do a little bit of math and say, um, you know, okay, I work 25 flights a month, and that means X number of flights per year, and that means over eight years, this is how many flights I had total. And so that's a really great way of estimating. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, okay? Even if it's a little bit off, no one's gonna go and question it, but at the end of the day, it's your best guess, and it's a great way of quantifying a specific amount of experience in the particular industry that you have. And then, you know, she said that she was also, um, um, you know, for, for a number of those, she was the head flight attendant. So that's a really good accomplishment as well. And we've managed to figure out that about half of those, so about 500 flights in her case, were um, where she was the head flight attendant. So that's a great way um, to quantify that as well. And then we went and found out some other things and, um, and, you know, made her, her accomplishments a lot more impactful because they're very easy to digest. People will say, wow, those are, you know, great numbers and they're really easy to understand. So that's what people are looking for. And also the same thing is what you need to do on your resumes too, is really have all of your um, experience as quantifiable as possible. Something that's very tangible, very specific, and what have you actually accomplished rather than what do you do? Yeah, Izzy, I think that's a great distinction because, which I learned from you years ago, that us or, or a lot of people, they write the job description on the resume instead of saying what they accomplished. So I know what an analyst does or, or a marketing person does or a flight attendant does, but it doesn't distinguish you from the other people. So I think there's a lot of value in saying with quantifiable, tangible numbers, what you've accomplished and therefore they'll pay more attention or they'll, they'll get an idea of where you added value. So thanks for that. Totally. And yeah, exactly right. It's, it's really about, you know, because if, if you're a flight attendant and you're applying for a flight attendant role where, well, everybody is also going to say they were a flight attendant because these people are all applying for the same. If you're an accountant and on your resume you say, I did accounting, well, <laughs> that doesn't really say anything because all the people that are applying for this job are going to be accountants. So it's not setting you apart. And it's, it's basically like just applying online. Everyone's an accountant. So it, it doesn't exactly. really cut any corners. I want to just uh, quickly interrupt and acknowledge Catherine Pulgar should we email the job application directly or should we try to connect on LinkedIn first to create networking? I believe you've, you've been answering that. And Ana Maria says, is it like when you are writing your personal statement when you are applying for the medical re residency? Because we use like magical stories to catch the attention of recruiters to make a difference. Yeah, I really like that. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about what specifically to say in the email but definitely crafting a bit of a story of who you are and why you're interested in something is uh, what we're gonna be going for. And I'll show you, there's an actual template right after the slide that you'll see of, of an example of an email that I wrote and, um, and how I suggest you do it. 
The third part of this is asking for help and specifying a specific call to action, which is, can I meet with you for a short 15 or 20 minute call on Tuesday at 2 p.m.? Because you want to make it as easy as possible for them to say yes or no. And even if they say no, they might say no, but I can do Tuesday at 3 p.m. So as much as possible, take all the thinking out of it for them, take all the work out of it for them. You wanna make it as easy as a click of a button and just saying yes or no and a quick email and that's it, right? We and wanna make it super easy. That's not considered rude here in Canada either. Just you're no. saving people time. Can you meet at this time, this day? If, if anything, you're saving people time and I don't think you're being bossy. I, yeah. for me, I, I'm just, commenting here because for me I was like oh am I interfering with their schedule will they not even answer because I'm asking for a specific time but people actually love it because if, if it's up to them to decide they're not even going to answer I think because it's, yeah. it's it's the onus is on them that they they have to do something totally that's exactly right you want to make it as easy as possible for them to just say yes or no or give an alternative as quickly as possible because everybody's busy and no one wants to go and especially you know, go out of their way for someone that they've never met and go and figure out when they can meet with you and do all that work. You're the one who should do that work. So just find specific time, ask that time, ideally between like Tuesday and Thursday, um, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. kind of thing, like sometime during office hours, make it as easy as possible. They will let you know if they're interested in talking to you and, um, and how. Okay, next, here's the email template. So I'm gonna read this out. So there's an organization called Free Code Camp, which is really awesome, by the way, for anyone who's learning how to code. And, um, and the founder of it is Quincy Larson. And he's actually a friend of mine. We've met a few years ago and stayed at my apartment um, while I was hosting a conference. But this is a fake position that I made up and an email that I showed you, uh, that I wrote up just to show you how I email people. So, hi, Quincy. I hope you're having a nice start to your week. My name is Izzy and I've been following the Freak Code Camp blog and Twitter for the past few years. I'm also an alum of the program and it's been such a life-changing experience for me to be able to teach myself how to code at my own pace. I noticed that there's currently an opening for a community event coordinator and I'd love to learn more about it. A little bit more about me. Last year, I organized a free developer conference for 300 attendees with a budget of under $1,000. As a community manager at Lighthouse Labs, I, impl I implemented a strategy that increased the conversion rate from applicants to enrolled students by 34%. From 2016 to 2018, I led a multi-city team to organize over 50 tech events over across Canada with an average of 400 to 60, 600 attendees per month, right? Very simple, you know, uh, tangible accomplishments. I'd love for the opportunity to jump on a short call and chat a bit more about what I think I can bring to the team at Free Code Camp. I've got a few ideas around events we could organize that could really help engage the Free Code Camp community through a series of themed monthly hackathons. There, you're actually giving a specific thing that you can do for them that's gonna be like, a, oh, hey, that sounds interesting. Yeah, sure, let's talk, that sounds really cool. Would you be available for a short 20 minute chat on Thursday at 2 p.m.? Looking forward to hearing from you. All the best, Izzy. Do not include your resume. Do not include any of that. This is just a casual email. I call this the resume email because it basically conveys who you are, your personality, your professionalism, and your kind of top three accomplishments all in one simple punch that you send over to, um, to someone you apply to, okay? So this works super, super well. Just this past week, it's worked really well for my students and several of them got, um, got comments on how professional they came across in their emails to total strangers that they've never met before. So this is a template that works. It is in the mini course um, and, uh, and you know, copy it, use it, do whatever you need. It, it will help you a lot. Izzy, for, 
like I think three bullet points. Gold is four too much, five too much. Let's six. start with three. I mean, if you're if you've got like a burning fourth one, sure. <laughs> you know, if there's yeah, like yeah. Ah, fire in your eyes, I've got to get this fourth one out there. Sure, you know, do what you need to do, but you want to also try to keep this email as quick, skimmable, yeah. and concise as possible. One of the other things about this email right now, you might notice, is I can look at this for three seconds and get the gist of it. You know, it, my eyes are immediately attracted to the bullet points and it gets me to, to read those very quickly and it takes very few seconds to do that. I can just scan and see 300 attendees, 34%. These numbers pop out and as much as possible, you want to make your emails as quickly skimmable and digestible as possible. And this is exactly the template that's gonna help you do that. I, th I, I just wanna highlight three things about this email and then I'll go to Silvio Molina's question. Sure. Gold, gold worth a million dollars. So the thing that I like, first thing I like is you mentioned in the first couple sentences that you've actually invested some time in, in learning about the company and, and you've been a supporter. Then the tangible, things in the three bullet points but especially what i think i can bring to the team and therefore the ceo or whoever's reading this is like oh my god they've they think they can bring something to the team okay i'll, I'll give them 20 minutes of my time because everyone wants to look good and everyone wants a, a, a better team and better results and then silvio molina has a golden golden question which i've been thinking about too what sure. should the subject line be? <laughs> this is a tricky one. Um, honestly, a lot of the time, I like to write something super simple like, hi, Quincy, would love to chat. Or, you know, something like that. Something that's very easy. Um, or, you know, in this case, it could be like, hi, Quincy, organizing hackathons together. You know, something that's, that kind of gives them a little teaser for what it is. Um, but I really do like to add their name, you know, hi, so-and-so. That's my personal preference. Not everybody, not everybody does that, but I find it tends to work pretty well. So something that it appears like you're speaking to them one-on-one -on -one and like it's mm -hmm. nothing, like it's been a copy and paste email, like a formal title kind of. Yeah, yeah. And it's really important that this is a custom email for, for every person that you send this to. So yeah. you have to actually go and put in at least, you know, 10, 15 minutes of work finding a little bit about the person you're emailing so that you know what to say. That first section here, the, um, you know, the, the section up here, that's the part where we try to engage them and flatter them a little bit. Because when people are complimented about the work that they've done, the things that they've accomplished, they immediately want to like open up because people don't often get the recognition that they want and so desire. Especially in corporates. Especially in corporates. So when somebody notices that you've done a lot of work and hey, look at all this experience that you have in your career, it must have been a challenge making a transition from this kind of role to this kind of role. You know, people go, wow, yeah, it was a challenge. And it immediately makes them kind of gives them this good feeling and sets up a good positive tone for the rest of the email. Okay. Love it. I love it. <clears throat> Andy, okay. Andy Mendoza, sorry, is he Andy Mendoza yeah, yeah. had a buzzer beater question before the last, the next slide. Sure. Would people hire in the organization have too many emails? And do you have insights if such individuals would be reading these emails, or I guess if they're if they're willing to read these emails from a stranger? Yeah, so we're <laughs> that's in the next section, and you're gonna love the next section. Okay, so buckle up, buckle just, up, Andy. Just, just to quickly answer that, um, yes, a lot of people get tons of email. And you being in that, you know, top viewing real estate for, for getting their attention is hard to do. But one trick that you can do based on the, the um, you know, a number of studies done by like 
MailChimp and, and ConvertKit and all these like newsletter companies is the best time to, and days to send emails to people is between Tuesday and Thursday between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Because Monday, everybody is catching up from all their emails from the weekend. Tuesday morning is when they've already alleviated some of that. And between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. is when they're likely in the middle of work at their office. And it's the highest likelihood where they will see an email pop up on their screen and intrigue them if the, you know, if the subject line comes up that they're interested in. So that's where it's really important that you don't, you know, write these emails and then at 3 a.m. when you're done, just hit send and you're like, oh, finally, you know, I sent it off. It's really important that you schedule the email. There's lots of scheduling tools. One of them is going to be included in that mini course. Um, on on scheduling these emails to go out at specific times in the middle of the workday so it increases the likelihood of them being read. Izzy, we have um we have a couple of questions. And sure. Jorge says, does this really work? Because in my experience, most managers won't read anything this long from a stranger. And then the second question from Carolina is, will we be going over a sample email when there are no positions available? Or should we use this one and adapt it accordingly to ask for advice? And I just want to throw in my two cents for five seconds. Sure. Um, I used this sample email for the last three years because Izzy showed it to me like three years ago when I had just quit my job. And, and um, I got corporate events at Ryerson, I mean at York University, U of T, BMO, because the, the probability of a human Probably most managers, well, some managers don't want to read emails or they're super busy, but still it's a human being. And the probability of someone reading this, and even if they're busy forwarding it to someone else, is so much higher than the online job boards or whatever. Okay, so that was my two cents. Does this work Bingo. from Jorge and Carolina? A sample email when there are no positions available. Yeah, so... Um... There's going to be a few other templates in that little mini course, but um, essentially what I would do if there's no position available is take one of two strategies. One is um, instead of saying, I know this is an opening for a community event coordinator position, you could say something like, you know, um, I'd be interested in um, a community event coordinator position in this company, even if it doesn't exist, right? Um, and then you list off your experience and you, all the rest is the same. And that's a way of saying, you know, who you are and what you want to do for a company and potentially, you know, tearing open an opportunity that may not have existed in the past. And even if there isn't an opportunity here, they might still want to get on the phone with you and have a chat. And, um, and the benefit there is they might know somebody at a different company who needs that. So there's an opportunity for the conversation you have with this person to make them feel good because they're helping you and also to help their friend who needs one of these companies, you know, these roles with their company. So, um, so don't be shy. There's, uh, there's, you know, one of the other email templates that I've got is specifically on asking for help rather than asking for a position. And that will focus more on, you know, um, the, the, the beginning is the same, and the second part is more going to be, I just recently graduated from the University of Toronto, and I'm looking on how to break into a role in, you know, as a software developer. I noticed that you've got lots of experience in that, working here, 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 and made your way from a junior position all the way up to a senior developer role. And you can talk a little bit about you. Would you be open to hopping on a short call with me? Um, I'd love to learn a bit more about your experience and how I can follow along your footsteps and, you know, and kind of create that career path for myself. So the, the nice thing about the asking for help email is that when you ask for a job, it sometimes puts people on the defensive. Okay. So when you ask for a job, the people you're emailing will get defensive sometimes because they may not have a job. They 
may um, not have any decision making power. They may not want to invest their their own um, you know uh, not credibility, their own like reputation on giving you a chance. And so it can be difficult that way. But if you ask for help in advancing your career, then a lot of the time it's a lot easier for them to say yes and hop on a 20 minute call because they know where you've been. This person also has, you know, inevitably had similar experiences to you when they first graduated, when they were first transitioning to a different job, and they know what it feels like. So if you kind of tap into that emotion where you've been struggling and you know you're you're looking for new opportunities and you show this ambition by emailing them, there's a good chance that they're going to want to email you. But to the point that um, I think it was Jorge that, that uh, mentioned earlier, will people read my emails? Like Stefan says, not everyone is going to read your emails. And this, this isn't a guarantee here, but it will significantly increase your chances. And um, from, from the, the stats that I have, it's about one in four instead of one in 100. So 25% uh, is much higher than you know, one or less than 1%. And that's where I think this really shines. Okay, anything else, Stefan? Not, not right now, but later I'll, I'll ask you about, some people feel like frauds or like imposter syndrome and they feel like their experience from Colombia or from Venezuela or from Mexico may not be as valued here in Canada. And mm -hmm. even if they're like, oh, last year I worked in Venezuela, they're just immediately not going to read the email. Or so later, because I, um, I know you have a couple other slides, we just want you to address in your experience, how well is international experience viewed or if people will just ignore your email if you don't have that much Canadian experience? Mm -hmm. Um, so two of my students right now, one of them is a student from Mexico and another one is a student from India. The student from Mexico has had Canadian experience, so there's, a, there's an advantage there. But the student I have from India has never had a job in Canada. So um, by applying this technique, he was successful in landing at least, I think, three or, or four informational interviews in the last few weeks just by going through this. Um, and those informational interviews have led to new opportunities and new connections to other people. We're still early in the program. This is, I think, week four of the program now. So, um, you know, it does still take work and it takes persistence. But, um, you know, you don't have to focus on the things that, that you know, they don't need to know about. You don't have to lie and say, I, you know, I, I've had tons of experience in Canada and things like that. You don't have to say that. But you also don't have to highlight that either. You can just say, I've had experience working as a PR manager, or I've had experience working as a software developer, and I did it for four years, or something like that. You don't have to, in this email, um, you know, focus too much on that. And you know, if, they're, if they don't see the value in it from that, then that'll happen. And that's an unfortunate reality that, uh, that you know, I'm not going to say never happens because it does. And I know a lot of people in this group have had those challenges. But that's not to say that it will always happen. And that's not to say that this technique doesn't work because you don't have Canadian experience. So it, it definitely does. And I've worked with lots of people from diverse backgrounds and from other countries that, um, that use this technique and it does work for them as well. And, you know, feel free to reach out and I'd be happy to, to, you know, go over some of your stuff, email me your cover letter and I would love to check it out. And I think it goes back to the numbers game because the, the more of these emails you, you send to companies that you're really interested in working because they're big or because they may have good salaries or just because your core values align to these companies, then the more probability there is that you'll likely get a response from a company that you actually want to work in versus applying online for companies that you don't even want to work in. So it's, it's still a numbers game with a higher percentage of getting. Oh, well, it doesn't work. Go ahead. Lisa. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, 
So a lot of you are probably feeling like, ah, you know, emailing people that I've never met before. It can be scary. I totally acknowledge that. Everybody that I've worked with, like literally everybody that I've worked with, um, the first time we write something like this out, they are sweating. They are stressed. They are, oh my God, how can I send an email to a complete stranger? It feels very unnatural. And that feeling is not going to go away until you do it. You just need to commit. You need to write out that template. Use the exact templates that I have and go and fill in the blanks and modify it with your own experience. And just try it. Send out one email first. Then send out another one. Then send out another one. And I but promise you, you, I promise you. When you get that answer, it feels amazing when you get yeah. an answer. It's incredible because you know you caught something. Yeah, totally. Okay. So um, next here, and this is, this is a really fun step, is track, is the fourth step in my technique. And this one is going to blow your mind because you have probably never done this. And it is using techniques that typically companies do, like H&M or Coca-Cola or things like that. When they send you emails, and email newsletters, they are using these exact techniques to find out when you're clicking on things, when you're reading your emails, how many times you've read it, who you forwarded, you know, if you forwarded that email, all of that kind of stuff. That is technology that exists. The companies use against you. So it's time for us to take back that power and do the same thing when we're applying for jobs. Because we can empower ourselves in our job search by tracking the emails that we send out to see if people have read them. And this isn't about like read receipts and things like that. They will never know. Um, and so it's something that, that will give you a huge edge in your job search and give you a lot more motivation because you know out of the 10 people that you applied to that maybe five of them have read your email three of them have read it you know five times and two of them have replied and some of them have clicked on your links and things like that okay so those are the things that, are, that i'm about to show you here so there's a tool called mixmax.com um, if you sign up for this, I recommend you sign up using the link that I have in the mini course because it is a free tool. But if you want to use the like paid version of it, it'll give you two months free of the paid version, which is like $25 in credit or something. Um, but essentially what you do is when you send out an email, it'll add this little lightning bolt and tell you exactly when someone has read your email and how many times they've read it and things like that. And this makes such a big difference when you're looking for jobs because for the first time ever when you send out an email when you send out a job application you immediately know if these people are reading your emails or not if they are gonna reply or not and then you can start using this data to be strategic about your next moves if you know that you sent out this email and it was never read well, then there's a few options. Maybe that person doesn't work there anymore. Maybe they just never saw your email. Maybe, you know, there are a number of other things that can happen. So then you can decide, okay, should I follow up? Should I send a different email? Should I email somebody else? You know, you have a few different options that you can choose to do based on the new data that you have that you never previously had. Okay, so this is a free tool. And, um, and you can download it. It's a Gmail Chrome, uh, a, a Gmail extension, a Google Chrome extension that um, that kind of adds itself to your Gmail account. And uh, and you can just download it and use it for free. And then if you want to use their like additional features, then you can pay like ten bucks a month or something for it. Okay. Next is. Um, that was a lot. So there's a lot of things that we went through here. Um, I think we're going to focus next on um, one really important fact, which is if your target salary is $50,000 a year, you are losing $972 of potential income for every week that you're unemployed. Okay, so it's really important for us to try to really hack towards 
and use as many tools and shortcuts and opportunities that we can to, to kind of lower that gap and increase your earning potential. Because when we're unemployed, yeah, we feel it because we're not getting paid, but sometimes we don't know the extent of the impact. And this is kind of a, like a reality check of specifically how much potential income you're losing for every month. So that's a scary statistic, but it's something that's important for you to know. And, um, and I think it, in the long run, it'll, it'll help you kind of stay motivated and stay on track. And just when you work with people, stay on that kind of track where you're checking in with each other, making sure you're doing all the right things. Izzy, we, um, we, have, a couple, we have a couple of questions here. Yeah, for sure. Elite, Question. Elite says, I have done that about the email template. And yep. I was very surprised that everyone accepted to meet me. I uh, did this from Mexico. She's from Alpensando. I guess maybe that's cultural. Yes. And then uh, you can answer that. And then Salvador says, what about those people who don't have experience in the field? For example, customer service. Uh, uh, for example, in the field that they want in Canada, for example, customer service. And they have a few experiences from their home country. Mm -hmm. Also, they have Canadian experience, but in a totally different, different field, like working in a factory. Yeah. So what you want to focus on in these emails is, um, is, you know, what you actually want to do, right? And we don't want to talk too much about the things that we don't want to do. If people ask about the Canadian experience thing, that's when you can kind of pull out of your pocket that you've had experience working in Canada because they're looking for like a cultural fit of if you know how, you know, office professionalism works in Canada and that kind of thing. Um, so in that regards, I think it's important to focus on your actual expertise and less so on your Canadian experience and use the Canadian experience in your back pocket for, you know, if they ask you about it. Okay. Um, Izzy, we then, have sorry. a, oh yeah, go ahead. We have a doppelganger of yours, another Iskander. Oh, really? Uh, nice. Do people check you out on LinkedIn before answering your email? Oh, that's a really good question. Any oh, tips on really how good. to make a great LinkedIn profile? Paula Carreño, also a great person uh, from Malpensando. <laughs> I second that one. And then Rolando says, how do you know how much to ask for when is your first job in Canada? For when, mm. when it, for when it's your first job in Canada? Or how do you, or how can you know if you're getting paid the fair amount? Mm -hmm. Yeah, some good resources for that are going on glassdoor.com or payscale.com where you can type in your role title and the city that you live in and it'll give you the industry average for those types of roles. So glassdoor.com um, and payscale.com. Yeah, I think actually for Canada, glassdoor.ca. Okay, glassdoor.ca for Canada. And payscale.com. Those are good places to start with the salary. Um, regarding the LinkedIn stuff, I'm not going to go into that in today's workshop. There's a lot we can do there, but um, feel free to reach out and we definitely cover that in my course too. So if that's something that um, you're interested in, I've got, um, you know, the people that are signed up for this webinar we're, are going to be getting a couple of emails from me in the next week. And uh, you'll learn a little bit more of the, the course that uh, I'm just about to launch the next cohort. So you'll learn all about that and some of the things we dive into there. We got a couple more questions, but I'll let you go and I'll, I'll let you continue, and then I'll I'll uh, I'll ask you the questions in a couple minutes. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So the last part here is the you know I've mentioned this probably a hundred times already, but I think it's really valuable, and that's why I'm mentioning it. Um, so if you go to this link right here, bitly.com/ccmini, um, and we can type that in the chat maybe, Stefan, is uh, if you go to this. This course, mini course should take about an hour to do. It's totally free to sign up. And it's gonna go through step-by-step step with the email templates and everything that you want on how to actually um, uh, do everything that we want that, that we talked about and, and go into way more depth and detail on it. So 
It is something that shouldn't take very long. I highly encourage you to go and check it out. And then um, if you're interested and this is really working for you and you notice in the next week that, um, hey, you know, this is awesome and, and this is changing my life, great. Let me know. And if you are interested, you know, I've got group coaching courses that span about five weeks and each week we cover a different topic. And uh, I'm not, I won't talk too much about that because I don't want this to be a salesy thing, but I'll talk, um, you know, I'll email people about those opportunities as well if that's something you're interested in. Yeah, okay. some people have already expressed interest. So two people have already messaged me. So within the Great. email that we'll send you through Eventbrite, we'll include all those options. And yeah. then I got, I got four questions piled up, Izzy, but I'll let, I'll let you continue and then I'll just ask them all together. Yeah, I think we're pretty much done. I, you know, <laughs> I really want you guys to, to make a lot of progress, to um, be excited, to be motivated, to, you know, to take some big leaps that I think are going to make a big difference in your career. So that's the end of the, the actual presentation part of this. I really do want to take some questions and uh, see, you know, what else you guys want to know and happy to kind of dive into all that stuff now too. Um, this quote I love by Amelia Earhart, the most difficult thing is the decision to act. The rest is mere tenacity, which is, you know, uh, persistence, like making sure you have the, the consistency to do something. Okay. So I love a little it. Bit about my, my contact information down there. You can find me on LinkedIn, Izzy Piala Sheard. If you add me on LinkedIn, don't just add me, you know, message, add a, a note so I know that you're coming from this workshop, you want to reach out. Cool. My Twitter is Izzy Does Izzy, and um, and yeah, just reach out in any way you can. We'll add my contact information as well, and uh, let's have the question. What do what do people want to know about now? Okay, we got four questions piled up here, so I'm gonna just go in order. Felicia, yeah. I've noticed that sometimes on LinkedIn, when you connect with some people, and even after, including a brief message and crafting a story about who you are they still look at it and end up not replying. How do you know when to double text or follow up if you can see they've read the message but still don't reply? Yeah, LinkedIn is tricky. I personally, I really prefer the email approach um, because then I can track it and see it and all that kind of stuff. Um, what I will say about LinkedIn is it's really important that you don't, like what I just told you to do with me, don't just email people or don't just add people on LinkedIn, have a specific ask. But again, as you say, LinkedIn is so spammed with people constantly requesting people's contact and things like that, that a lot of the time you're not going to get an answer. And that's unfortunate, but that's just how it is. Um, but what I will say, and this is a trick that my, my students kind of figured out on their own, which was really cool, is after people sent the email to the people they're reaching out to, sometimes they saw that these people read their emails, but didn't reply. And one thing that a few of them did that, that now all of them are doing because it seems to work is <laughs> they go and check out that person on LinkedIn. And you know, if you look at someone on LinkedIn, they can see that you've looked at them and they come and look mm -hmm. at you and send profile back <laughs> and have a little bit of extra thing. And yeah. so when you email them and you, they see you read it and then you go and like, these guys go and like every day they'll click on this person's LinkedIn. <laughs> and so it actually, for, for a lot of them, it made a big difference in these people like eventually keeping reminded, being reminded of you and then eventually answering your email. So that's a little kind of sneaky trick that my students taught me that it's a uh, not, it seems to work well. It's a, it's a non-aggressive kind of passive aggressive follow-up because you're not doing anything, yeah. but you're still it's following up. Subtle, it's a little subtle, like, Hey, remember me? Yeah. <laughs> still, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> we got Luis Mendes. Would you recommend for all the new graduates looking for a job? Oh, what would you recommend for all the new graduates looking for a job during this pandemic time, especially in the finance industry? Mm -hmm. Or yeah, any industry, because everyone's going through the same pandemic. For new, for new grads, for people who are changing industries, trying to figure out what they're doing next, my biggest urge to you is 
to start with the ask for help emails. Okay, so I want you to try to, to reach out to people and genuinely connect with them, like in that email template. But instead of asking for a specific job, like we mentioned, I want you to ask for help. So like I kind of briefly mentioned earlier, is talk to your people in the finance industry and try to flatter them a little bit by some of their experience and some of the cool things you see that they've done on LinkedIn or on their blog posts, or if they have a YouTube channel, if they're on a podcast, whatever it is, acknowledge some of the stuff that you see um, and give them like a little bit of flattery pat on the back so they get excited about talking to you and then ask for help. And honestly, people so rarely ask for help, but um, it's really important if you just, you know, there, there's a saying that, that goes, ask and you shall receive. Because if people don't know that you need help, they can't help you. But if people know exactly what you're looking for, they can offer you help if, you know, if they choose. But you're, you know, you're never going to land those opportunities if nobody knows about it. So it's really important to just email people, be casual. Talk to all your friends, like we said, you know, and find opportunities to talk to everyone that we possibly can and, and plant as many seeds as you can for kind of conversation starters to have yeah. people connect them with you this is my biggest suggestion there. Love it. We got, uh, Izzy, you're a very popular guy. We got 11 million questions lined up. Uh, <laughs> 11, 11, 11. Okay, Gabriela Carrillo, Gabby Gabs, this is a bit of a side topic, but does it truly matter to recruiters if you've been in multiple jobs, averaging one or one and a half years in each position? Do they look at this? Will they reject you? Um, so, no, I don't think it's that important. Um, what's more important is that you kind of tell an overall story um, it, it can sometimes hurt you if people see you bounced around a lot. Um, and then people might get a little bit nervous if, you know, you know, are you going to stay with us for three months and then bounce here too? Um, but if you paint the right picture, I think it doesn't have so much of an impact there. The important part is making sure that um, you tell the right story. People understand, you know, who you are and what you're looking for. and um, you know, while you're trying to convey who you are, convey the right experience. And that might be six months of experience. It might be two years of experience. What's important is finding all the relevant things to this particular job. So go through the job posting, go and find all the things that they want. And sometimes the experience that you have isn't from a job, it's from a volunteer thing or, you know, starting your own little business or, you know, all kinds of different things. Or when you were a student and you were part of a student organization, and you, you know, uh, were in charge of all their finances and the treasury or whatever, right? So these are all these different kinds of things that you can pull from and use to convey your experience. I love it. I think you partially answered Catherine Pulgar's question. Is it good to highlight student jobs if they are relevant to the job you're applying to right now? Totally, yeah. I mean, maybe with the exception of if you're someone like me, they graduated, you know, in 2011 and 10 years later, maybe don't bring up your student experience so much because <laughs> they're going to be like, why are you still talking about that? But, um, <laughs> But, you know, you can bring it up in your interviews and things like that. And, and if it's part of the story, say, you know, I've been interested in this since way back in university and I've been doing this. And, and now it brings me to this point where I want to make this my career. That kind of thing is OK. But I wouldn't make that your top highlight. Nice. We got Meryl. How do you get references from people from a while ago? Yeah, um, I mean, you got to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, sometimes sometimes people aren't in those jobs anymore. I've had a few people ask me that when when they don't have their contact information. I think the best thing you can do is try to, you know, do a little bit of a, a catch me game where you uh, you reach out to the company you used to work for, see if they still have that person's contact information. Or if you go on LinkedIn and use all the tools that we just learned today, 
and uh, fish out that person's email directly and say, hey, you know, Samantha, we used to work together. Um, I found your email and, uh, you know, would love to chat a little bit. I'm looking for a role in this. I'd be honored if you'd be willing to give me a reference um, and, uh, you know, would love to chat more. Yeah, I think asking asking is is I I've rarely had people say no, you know. I I think we're mm-hmm. just scared of failure. Pratik says what should be the frequency of follow-ups in case you don't get a response to your email? I love that question because I'm always good. I'm like, "Uh, is it rude after 5 days? Is it rude after 20 days?" Yeah. Yeah, I would say if people don't respond, generally wait about a week and respond one more time. And if they haven't after that, maybe find someone else um, or find another way of contacting them on LinkedIn or something like that. Like looking um, at their LinkedIn profile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or actually like adding them with, you know, when you add them, you can add a personalized message when you invite, when you invite them to connect. Um, that's a way that you can do that as well that I think is really valuable. Gabriela Ureña says, what about online job fairs? Based on your personal experience here in Canada, is that something that works to connect with potential recruiters? Um, recruiters are a mixed bag. Sometimes they're going to help. Sometimes they won't be that helpful. A lot of the time they're looking for very specific things. So they'll be looking for like, you know, to fill sales roles or to fill, um, you know, very specific types of people. Um, Online job fairs is honestly, just to be perfectly frank, I haven't done any online job fairs. I know that that's kind of a big thing in the COVID era, especially. I haven't heard great things about online job fairs. Um, I've heard they get pretty spammy and not really that useful. Um, but what might be more useful is, is actually finding online conferences and engaging in the social media discussion around those conferences online. So for instance, if there's a design conference and you're really into design, go and attend that conference online and uh, and just tweet about it or Instagram about it or LinkedIn about it and engage with the other people that are talking about that conference. And that's when you're going to start meeting other people. Um, one thing I will say about that is, again, with the ask and you shall receive, if there is ever a conference or like a professional development thing that you're really interested in but you can't afford it in 2016 i was in between jobs and i was really interested in a few different conferences to break into the tech industry and um but i couldn't afford to go to like an 800 dollars conference or two thousand dollar conference and things like that so by just going up and finding the organizers and emailing them or tweeting at them and things like that. I basically asked for opportunities to volunteer at the conference in exchange for a ticket because I, you know, I was a student or I couldn't afford it or I was between jobs. Or um, I just asked if there was an opportunity to you know, attend this conference and do anything in exchange. So by doing that, I gained access to about $2,500 in conferences four different conferences for free um, just by, by asking the volunteer. Two of them were volunteers. So I, I you know, went and volunteered at the conference. Um, one other one was like, uh, hey, you know, this is actually fine. You can just attend. Here's a free ticket. <laughs> and, <they laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and another one was uh, kind of a little contest that I found out about through reaching out to someone. and. Um, and they said, you know, the first 20 people that submit a video talking about this will get a free ticket to this $800 conference. I like in three seconds went and did it and immediately got a ticket. So um, those kinds didn't of opportunities you, come up if you ask. Didn't you organize a schedule for the whole conference for a, for a conference that people loved? Like you did something yeah. that even was better than the actual conference? Yeah, yeah, there was a conference called Discover Your Personal Brand that I went to a few years ago. And this was one that I like reached out to somebody on Twitter because it was like 300 bucks and I couldn't afford it. And they said, yeah, sure. Why don't you come and, you know, we'll hook you up with the volunteer committee. They let me volunteer and they had a bunch of speakers and they had a schedule and things like that. But I'm someone who loves Twitter. 
So what I wanted to do is put everybody, you know, look up all the speakers and put all their Twitter handles together in one like spreadsheet and like when they're talking and what they're talking about. And I, I spent like three or four hours doing that. And then the next day I like posted it on the conference uh, Twitter and things like that. And then I went and by the time I got there, before I met anybody, I said, <laughs> hey, I'm Izzy, I'm here to volunteer. And they were like, you're Izzy? You're the person who like made this thing? And I started <laughs> using it as their official material. <laughs> That's incredible. We got a two part question here. And by the way, it is it is 7:30, and I guess it's officially finished. But we've got a bunch of questions, so if you if you want to ask a question, we'll we'll we'll, we'll answer in a, in a bunch of comments. But Pruteik has a two part question. It says, "How soon after the networking connection is it a good time to mention that you're looking for a job and not just industry advice?" And then I've been told in some other webinars that it is not good practice to talk about job opportunities in the very first connection request. Is that true? So I would say this, when you're connecting with someone for an informational interview, don't ask them for a job, ask them to help you with a job. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, ask them to help you on how to connect with other people to break into this industry, rather than saying, I'm looking for a job. Because when you look for a job, it's gonna be hard all around and people are gonna get nervous about it. But if you say, hey, you know, I am trying to break into design, here's some of the three, you know, and you can name your accomplishments, like you said, and um, I would love to know, you know, what are the conferences that I can go to? What are the people that I can connect with? What are the communities, Slack communities that I can join and things like that? And they're gonna give you some advice and what's really important at that point is following up after you listen to their advice. So if they say, hey, you know what, you wanna get into design, you've gotta read this book. Go and read the book and then come back to that person in a week and say, hey, you know, Stefan, I read the book you were talking about. It was so useful. I learned this and this and this. Um, you know, any other advice and connections and anything you have, would be really useful. One thing I love to ask is who are the top three people you think would be useful for me to connect with? And they don't have to connect you directly. You can just ask for their names and you can connect directly. But when you ask that question, a lot of the time they'll kind of volunteer to connect you um, and that'll be an extra opportunity there for you. I love it. I think it's a it, goes, it goes back, yeah. It goes back to, to ask and you shall receive. I have a question by Salvador Delgado, which I love. If you get an opportunity to get into a call with that person, with the person you reach, what must, what must you do during that call? Because it's happened to me and they're like, yeah, let's do it right now. And you're like, oh, what should I say? And yeah. especially if you're an immigrant, they're like, oh, they won't like my experience or I have an accent or, uh, and then you're like, I don't have any questions. Will they, will they, they, it's, it's uncomfortable. What, what should you do in that call? Yeah, definitely. Super good question. Um, that's something that it's really important. You make, take advantage of their time because they, you know, make sure you come super organized to that call with a list of, you know, questions about what you can do to advance your career, suggestions that they have, people that you should follow, um, you know, you can ask them for their specific advice on, you know, I saw in your career that you transitioned from a junior software developer to a senior software developer in three years. You know, how did you do that? How would I go about doing that? And what advice do you have so I can make that transition? Come up with a list of things that you're actually curious to learn about this person. And in order to do that, you have to do your research. You have to find out about them. Go on their LinkedIn. Go, if they have a blog, if they have a YouTube, if they have a LinkedIn, if they have a Instagram, whatever it is, go and find out all the opportunities you have to kind of know a little bit more about this person. And there's a little bonus here. If you see videos or podcasts or Instagram videos or things like that of this person, you'll immediately get a little bit of their demeanor and know what to expect 
because you know what they sound like and what they, you know, how they talk and things like that. And it'll give you a better kind of preparation for how to talk to them. Yeah, I, I love that. People really appreciate it when you've done the research because they typically get the same questions and the same, can you help me get a job? And the other person's like, what? No, I'm not, I'm not doing all the work. Yeah. So something that's helped me is doing all the, all the work so that they don't have to do a lot. And if they don't have to do much, then they're more likely to help me. That was one of that the, was kind of like, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say one of the best things that you can do is if you can drive the meeting, that is going to like both in this scenario and in your career in general, if you can be someone who drives the meeting, who like takes charge, comes up with an agenda and sticks to it, that's one of the best things you can learn how to do in your career. So like look up some tricks on how to do that and how to set an agenda and how to, you know, how to lead a meeting. And, you know, if you come at this kind of meeting and say, um, hi, Stefan, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me. It's, it's really a pleasure and it makes so much of a difference in my career. Uh, in this meeting, I kind of wanted to lay a bit of an agenda. I wanted to chat a little bit about your experience and how you got to where you are today. I wanted to learn a little bit about specific communities and events you think I should join. Um, and know if the, you know you know of any opportunities that uh, you know that I should look for or where I should look for different kinds of jobs that you think will be useful. So if you kind of set specific agenda items and then you stick to them, they're gonna be like, wow, this is great. Like this person is taking charge of the meeting. I don't have to do any of the work. I'm just gonna answer their questions. And, that's <laughs> yeah. it. And, it, and it looks super professional. It will make them remember you 100%. It will make them remember you because of how organized you are. I guarantee you. One of the things that, that, that helped me when I've done that because you gave me that advice is telling the person how long this will be, how, how, like in the next 15 minutes or in the next 20 minutes. So they don't think it's like seven hours of a call totally. or whatever. Totally. And, uh, we, we have uh, one last question from Daniel Mereles. Do you have any advice to the people that are into the visual arts industry, like VFX 3d, because our resume or experience consists on a demo reel instead of a CV. So sometimes if you're a junior, it feels like they don't look at you because of a short experience in the industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there are lots of different ways of displaying your, your demo reel, right? And find how you can do that. Do you have a personal website where you can have it as a banner? Can you post it on Vimeo or on YouTube or wherever where you have something that you can send to people? Um, you can get feedback on your portfolio. Be careful when you're doing that because you don't want it to look like when you're asking for an informational, you can, you can make that an upfront ask. You can say, I'm looking for people to give me advice on my portfolio. Um, <clears throat> just to be clear, you know, I, I would love for some advice on how to, to make it better. And, and I can see that that's something you've done a lot of. Um, I'm not someone who's an expert in this particular field, so I don't know what some of the industry standards are, but um, you know, reach out and you can email me and we can look at it together. Love it. So that, Izzy, that was the, the last question, but I have two quick questions because I know that people have thought about it. So, sure. so the first one, that's a, it's just one question and then it's a comment that, that you taught me that helped significantly in my email. So the first one is, do they think like I'm kissing their bum when I'm complimenting them at the beginning or like, what's the limit? Cause, cause sometimes in Latin America, it's like, ah, they they just want the job. That's why they're complimenting me. What's the Canadian mindset or, or what's it like? And then can you just briefly talk about the hyperlinks in the email to make it more shorter, like shorter, Instead of explaining a bunch of things, you can, you can hyperlink something. Yeah, totally. So about the compliment thing, um, I would just say use your gut. If it feels icky, it probably is. 
if it feels like you're excited about something, then it probably is more genuine. You know, get get a friend to read it and see how they feel about it. Um, I I think it really comes down to authenticity and yeah. you know, is this something that you actually care about? Do you actually feel like you want to know about this thing, or are you just saying that? Try to yeah. find the things that you genuinely feel, and it it it's so funny, but it comes across. People can tell, and so if it's something that's authentic they'll be able to tell. And if it's something that they're, it feels like you're just kissing their butt, they're going to be able to tell. And so just, you know, be authentic about it. Nice. And then can you just talk about the hyperlinks in the email that yeah. have been so useful to me? And, yeah, yeah, to interrupt, sure. and does that decrease the, uh, the likelihood of someone reading it? Because if there's so many hyperlinks, it might seem like spam. Yeah, totally. Um, if we go back here to our previous slide with the emails and stuff, hold on, let me just go back. This one here. So one of the things that uh, I think I showed Stefan a couple of years ago is, is another way to kind of break up this email and make people's eyes attracted to specific parts are if you hyperlink specific things. Like I, can, I could have uh, added a link to this free developer conference and then added a link to the YouTube video of the conference. Um, I could have, you know, bolded. Uh, you could bold a couple things too. Yeah, sure. You could bold a couple things. Don't go too overboard. Just like if there's one or two different things that you want, really, you want them to pay attention to. Those are things that um, you can hyperlink or bold. Um, you know, you could say a multi-city team to organize 50 tech events. Like if you have a specific link to your portfolio or your demo reel or something where it would come in handy here, that's where you can put it in. The added benefit is that Mixed Max will be able to track if they click on it as well. So that's really cool. Oh, that's gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I guess from 64 million, 46 million stayed till the last second. A nice. bunch of people have messaged me privately and a bunch of people have messaged uh, pri publicly here. Thank you so much, Izzy. Uh, so many helpful tips. Thank you a lot. Sure. And then um, do you have any, any clothes? So this is the free mini course as people are hopping off and then, uh, yeah. Do you want to close off with anything? Izzy? I just want to say thank you so much for, for taking this time to listen. I, I genuinely hope it was useful. Please let me know if it was or if it wasn't, um, what you'd like to know more about. I try not to focus too much on some of the stuff that I feel is less important, like the, you know, the resumes and the LinkedIn tips and stuff that you, you can get elsewhere and focus on the stuff that I think that I can help you with personally that, um, you know, is going to make a big difference and has made a big difference for all the people that I've worked with. So take that to heart. Um, you know, reach out, do the courses, and um, if you're interested in more support, I'm going to be emailing people about the actual five-week program that um, that is kind of like as jam-packed as this, but for five weeks, every Saturday or every Monday, depending on the one you're going to get into. And um, and it's a really great supportive community, and we can talk all about that too. But that's not the time for that. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. And Stefan, thank you, and Alfonsando for, for hosting me. Yeah. It's, uh, it's always fun to do this. this. You might be able to tell that, that it's something that you know genuinely <laughs> lights me up. I get excited about yes. it because I love helping people, and I love helping people succeed. Ana Maria says, you did change my life, LOL. Stefan was right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, genuinely, Izzy is the most positive, kind, and helpful person that I know. So, yeah, I just wrote, continue the conversation on Twitter. Follow uh, Izzy, does, does Izzy. And then we will email you the links to the slides, to Izzy's email, to Izzy's mini free, free mini course. And the whole thing, I mean, you can just ask Izzy questions on Twitter. That'll be the, 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 the best way. And apart totally. from that, I think that's it for now. Yeah, let me just throw my email into the chat here too so people have it if they want. 
Um, my email is izzy at joinclearcareer.com. There it is. So if you want to email me, feel free. Um, oh, Carlos. Is this Carlos from Lighthouse? Cool. Yeah, Lighthouse yeah. alumni represent. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> or it could be one of the 10 Carlos's from Mat Pensando and then they researched you on LinkedIn and then they wrote that so you got excited. You never know. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> nice. He says, Carlos says right on. So it, it is him. Cool. Well, thank you everybody so much. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Mat Pensando. And uh, this was so much fun. So if this is useful. This was great and, and it works. It, it works wonders. So oh, thank you, everyone. So people know, my mom is here. My mom's watching, so I want to just give a wave to your my mom. Is my your mom is is Skander? My mom is. Oh, well, I'm not going to say her name. But <laughs> she's in the chat. <laughs> All right, we can uh, we can find your email. We can look you up on LinkedIn. We can do filters, and then we can look at last names. Use all your tricks on you, and then we can find out who you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay, my friends, thank you. Thank everyone for, for staying here. Uh, follow Izzy, ask us any questions, and, and uh, yeah, this is it. Thank you. It'll be recorded on YouTube. It is recorded on YouTube, so you can go on the Malpensando uh, YouTube channel and see it there. We'll also include that in the email. So that's about it. Okay, ciao. Excellent. Have a good Don't night, everybody. Goodbye.